well-behaved woman is trim and proper. Chores, always done. Not a hair out of place. When the husband comes home, she greets him with a smile. I'm sorry, what the fuck? Are you tired of Hitler? I've heard no shame. <laughs> okay, one liar as a kid can find another liar. <laughs> I want that stricken from the record. <laughs> How else is she gonna learn if she doesn't have a feather? I can go own. fuck in the big house. You're a mess, girl. I am here to audition for Babysitter's Club extras. I brought my own hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Well-Behaved Women, a podcast where, a po- new podcast about old ladies. I want to work that tagline in because I love it so much. What? The new podcast about old ladies. We're not really new anymore, though. No, I mean, we're still we're new. We're new. Under 50, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, new yeah. podcast yeah. about old bitches. Yes. Old bitches, old broads, old ladies. Yeah. Old um, broads. Old broads. Old broads. New, new pod about old broads. Love yeah, that it. was, I think, the original the new pod about. about old broads. I like that one better. Yeah, new yeah. pod about old broads. Like it. Um, anyway, I'm one of your hosts, Hannah, and I am here with B. Hello, B. Hello. You do not have to sit like that. You oh. can sit up like a, like a human. No, eat, eat the mic. It looks hilarious. Eat the mic. <laughs> that is true. If any video comes out, I'm just sitting like this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What are you doing? You can really get up close and personal <laughs> with my forehead. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm also Good here with minute. Lauren, who has a new story for us each week about an old lady. Yep. Good or bad. <laughs> be an old, lady broad, old an old hag, an old baroness. Lady from olden times. Yes. And we are ready. Hello, Lauren. Hi. I have a tale for you guys today. Excellent. So tell, first- us, tell us your tale. I'm going to tell you my tale. Once upon a time, a young man in Edo, Japan, had big dreams. Hmm. Iwasaki Yataro grew up in one of 14,125 islands that make up the nation. All right. He came from from one of the bigger islands on the southern end of Japan and came from what I'm going to say in my limited research is a fairly respectable clan of the southern half of the island called Takeda. If I'm wrong, I'm really sorry. I know, I, whatever. I I don't know. I feel like um, I've heard of it before, so maybe you're. There's no like close. huge news things that talk about how bad they were, so that's where I'm going. But it was also really hard to research this one as I had to do a lot of translations. So some of this is going to be rough. I'm going to go ahead and say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry in advance, but I'm trying. I feel like that should just be on every episode. For pretty much every, like, international not, where the yeah, language is not English right yeah. away, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be like, I'm making a, a guesstimate based off of translations. Anyway, so he's from Takeda. When he was old enough to work, he started with another clan called the Yamauchi, which were the, which was the ruling clan in that area at the time. He tried to go to school, but when his father was injured and he got into it with the city, like, they didn't want to pay for some reason. Anyway, he got kicked out of his town and he was in prison for seven months. Uh, so on his release, he rose from being a tutor all the way to working with the ruling lord of the clan who had dreams of international trade relations. All right. So he, he worked his ass off. He worked his ass off yeah. and he worked his way up to this thing. And then we discussed in our Zushi episodes that Japan had some issues with international trade. Uh, back in the 1800s, they so this guy comes up through the ranks. He works for the government. He makes enough money to buy the samurai status back for his family name. It had been sold off generations earlier, and so he was like, "Well, I'm now able to afford to bring honor back to the name." All right. Long story short, he made really good business decisions, and he had great mentors in his ears as he slowly worked his way up the influential ladder. During this time, Japan is in a transitional period where the previously run feudal system was abolished, and so a lot of businesses run in that way beforehand had to disband and come together in new ways. He joins the Tsukomo Trading Company in 1870 as its president. It was a shipping company founded for the Yamauchi clan, and it served the business interests of that clan. In 1873, the company changed its name to Mitsubishi. Oh. 
a compound of Mitsu, which is three, and Hishi, which means literally water chestnut, which is often used in Japanese to denote a rhombus or a diamond. Ah! So the Yamauchi clan symbol was like this weird little diamond thing. So he basically yeah. honored their their heritage and also was able to create this cool logo. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Now, as soon as you said Mitsubishi, I'm like, I have something I can like anchor all of my references exactly to. as soon as i i knew as soon as i said that it would be like all right familiar very japanese of him as well yes exactly uh so to speed this up he made a lot of smart decisions and he at really really good moments um right out of the gate there's this recovery for ships that have been left in taiwan during an incident back in like 1874 the ships were recovered and it came back and then like later they were donated to the shipping company, and they were perfectly good ships. They just had to be abandoned there because they'd gotten beached. And so all of a sudden, he like they had these really good ships. They were able to diversify their portfolios. Mm-hmm. They moved into a bigger shipping and trading field um, at Nagasaki, and the and that was at the time that was where the only international port existed, ah. was right there in Nagasaki. So like it was the key spot in the country to be able to trade with other nations. Oh, well, that unfortunately makes me think of World War II and why it was such a big target now. Is that right? Okay, never mind. It looks like we're going to be talking about that. <laughs> Oops. I didn't look. <laughs> I swear I didn't look. No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> it's just unfortunately that's all I know about Nagasaki. Thanks for ruining the movie. True. Spoilers! Okay, sorry. How dare. I shall just not talk for the rest of the podcast. I'm, 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 oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, don't I'm, talk I'm, on a podcast. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm really helping. <laughs> All right, sorry. Right, so they go to Nagasaki. There's the only international port. They buy a shipyard, and they grow their fleet. The shipping company changes its name a bunch, but the company is doing really well. Yatado has kids. Things are really picking up steam. But then in 1885, Yatado gets cancer and he dies. Oh, random question though. But you said the name changed a few times. So it changed from Mitsubishi to other names? So Mitsubishi was a parent parent company. Ah. And then there was, when they had shipping companies, there were shipping companies that didn't necessarily have the name Mitsubishi. Okay, I see. So, yeah, the big umbrella. The big umbrella company was Mitsubishi, but all of the smaller businesses could change their name. And he was specifically in the shipping area. No, he was with Mitsubishi. Oh, okay. But the shipping area was able to change its name a lot. I see. And, yeah. Okay. And and a lot of that came from, like, they would buy this company, and so they kind of have to, like, add this to a name or something like that. Yeah, rebrand. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So, unfortunately, he dies of cancer. He does. So the company passes to his brother, Yanosuke, who vows to honor his brother in the decisions he made for the company. After a few years in leadership for himself, Yanosuke, he made his money, he had his fun, he had his time in the sun, and he hands over the mantle to Iwasaki's son, Hisaya. Okay. Hisaya. Hisaya, who ran it for the next 23 years. His reign lasted through the turn of the century with all those technological advancements that came with that. Right. And it came, and also with that, since they were in the perfect, like, perfect space for yeah. it, they just had so many business advancements as well. They were yeah. just, they were very, basically very important family right the fuck away. All right. The industrial um, revolution. You what? The, the industrial revolution. Absolutely. Uh, so Hisaya modernized a bunch of corporate structure, even within the company, and he implemented processes that made the company run really smoothly, especially in defining job structure, like very specifically. So there's um, not a lot of redundancy. Mm. I don't, I, you know, you're not covering areas A, B, and C, and I'm covering areas B, C, and D, and he's covering areas C, D, and E. Yeah. It's like, all right, you will have A, B, and C, and maybe I have like the end of C. And yeah. And that's so not a lot of overlap. Yeah, not a lot of overlap and making sure that, like, everyone knows exactly what their role is at all times. Okay. Very strict hierarchical. <clears throat> I don't know, if, especially if it was hierarchy. I, I, I'm i sure that there was a Some level attached. of that because they had to have, like, management and shit. But I think it was more like, when I get hired for a job, I'm not going to get the line uh... and other duties as a sign. It's going to be like, 
this is how your thing works. Like this yeah. is 17 steps on how you do this piece of machinery. And this is the piece of machinery you work on all fucking Highly day. specialized. Yeah. I see. All the time. Okay. <clears throat> it, it made the way that their company worked uh, really smoothly, uh, a lot better, I guess, in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hisaya, he has his kids and he decides that uh, he decides he's going to retire and he passes the torch to his cousin, Ko- Koyata. I s- am seeing Koyata, but I also see Yanosuke. Um, I think Yanosuke was the... Um, oh, cool. Sorry, there's a lot of... There's like four guys that run this thing. Mm. So I think it's Koyata. He takes the mantle and he runs with it. So Hisaya, he enjoys his retirement. And instead of life and leisure, because he's made his money, he goes and works at a ranch. Oh. Like farm or something. He he works with like big animals and stuff. That's just like a second dream. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, I'm going to work on a farm. I'd do that. But here's who we're about to talk about today. Hisaya, he got kids. Because Hisaya was out of town when his first daughter was born, the girl's uncle, Yanosuke, named her to honor the other women who came before. Me for her great-grandmother, uh, and Ki for Kisei, Yatado's wife, and the baby's grandmother. I, I want to say Mi, Mi, Miha is the other grandmother, but do not quote me on that. Okay. It was another, it was another name that like I, I should have written down, but I, didn't. It's stricken from the record. Anyways, it's it, me is the first part of the grandma, the great grandmother's name, um, and then Ki is for Kisei, who was Yataro's wife, the guy that started Mitsubishi or that mm. was in Mitsubishi. Um, that was her grandmother. Okay. Now that we're now that we've got our little pre-story on this year in history, Australia is federated from colonies into a commonwealth. Mm-hmm. U.S. Steel is founded by industrialist J.P. Morgan, and the second inauguration of William McKinley happens in the U.S., and Paris is introduced to Picasso's for the first time. Picasso. So Paris is introduced to Picasso paintings for the first time. Oh, Picasso paintings. I was like, Picasso? Like, he just came in and said, okay, everyone, my hey, name is Picasso. Hey, guys. I'm here, I'm a big deal, and you're gonna see. Kind of a big deal. I'm like a majorly big deal. Okay, anyway. so give me all the give me all the info one more time. Alright, so Australia is federated from colonies into a commonwealth. US Steel is founded by industrialist JP Morgan, and the second inauguration of William McKinley happens in the US. And Paris is introduced to Picasso's for the first time. Well, based on that, I know inaugurations are on odd-numbered years because the election is previously on an even-numbered year. Yep. (laughs) A very specific thing to realize. So that's like anything will be an odd number. And you said it was around the turn of the century. So an election year around the turn of the century. Thinking. If you have a guess, whenever you're ready, shout Did you it out. Peak? So okay, so I here's not here's peak. what I what I know is that William, <laughs> what I know is that William McKinley was like the mid, maybe like 25 or 26 president, something like that, which would put us at like the 1880s or 90s probably. Uh, so I mean, you said turn of the century. Let's say 1893. Okay, what are you going to say? Um, I'm going to say 1903. All right. Uh, by, since we have all previously is, established. Yeah. Price is right rules. Price yeah, is right price rules. Price is right rules. We all agree. B's going to get it. Fuck. He gets it. Because you were over by two years. What? 1901. It was a 1900 election. Bob Barker would be so nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. He'd be so disappointed in me. <laughs> He'd have that skinny little mic and just go, Ugh. And you'd hear a crowd go, Oh. And he'd just go, Do you even have your pet spayed and neutered? <laughs> what are you doing on this show? 
<laughs> okay, so I was off to you two. You stay new to your pets, bro. Like, come on. All right, so I was off by two years. All right. So Mickey was the fourth child and first daughter to born to Iwasaki Hasaya. Ooh, Mickey, sorry. Side note, yeah. real quick. Should yeah. we, as the, not like to be competitive or anything, but should we keep like score, like from for the on this year in history between the two? I of would us, love just, to. Yes, just for I fun. I would love that. Yes, just for yeah. fun. I'll go back and listen and see, like in the year in histories, and I'll see where we're at. Okay, <laughs> I'll see where we're at. I want to say bees you, for at least for a Usually while. Usually, bees was got right. it. But yeah. I've had- I just want to know. Yeah, I I thought about that when we were doing this. Is like I wonder what like how what the score would be if we had kept track. Like how many we have now. I'll try to keep it up on the website for fun. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. We'll just have like a little um kind of tally. Yeah, yeah, a tally sheet. Yeah, I'll try to have a tally sheet. Anna versus B. Yeah, just got like a little like circle picture. Got our face, your face, mm-hmm. our face, my face, your face. <laughs> Like however it. you want to, however you want to talk about yourself, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I identify as three people, really. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, if, if you're identifying as they, them, you could say our. Why not? No, I'm actually identifying as she, her, but yeah, multiple personalities. Yeah, it's not maybe a, a couple thought processes at least. That wasn't even a full word. Processes. Okay. Processes. Speaking of, speaking of multiple peoples and processes, is is in your brain brain mm. spaces. Um, have you guys heard of the musical artist called Ren? No. Yeah. You need to, uh, when we're done recording, I will have you look it up and it will blow your fucking mind. All right. This guy is able to talk about mental health in like crazy ways and is just a wonderful, wonderful musician. Oh, all right. Anyway, um, artist of the week, I guess. That's our, that's our recommendation for the day. Mm-hmm. All right. So Mickey, was born the fourth child and first daughter to Iwasaki Hisaya. She was afforded every luxury in her young life. She is an heiress to the Mitsubishi fortune. Like, yeah, yeah. you're going to walk around with that Mitsubishi money. Yeah. Not something you hear a lot over here in America. Well, their family was like one money. of four, in, like the four kind of most influential families like of the nation at that point because they all, because they owned so many businesses. Were they like crazy rich Asians rich? Cra- yeah. Oh, like yeah. nice. They were one of the families. Um, okay. I don't think that it wasn't, they didn't get their money that way. They got their money in different ways, but they, yeah, they were. Oh, I don't know what I said by the family. Yeah, I was like, that's... I was just thinking it was, like, one of those families everybody knows about. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I was going with. I don't know what I meant by the... The Iwasaki name was, like, that was a known name. Okay. Because they, like, these brothers had run it, and then these... The the son and the cousin had run it, and, like, they, you know, continued to bring honor to the business and to the family. It was a whole thing. Okay, cool. Um... So she went to the best schools, and at the age of 15, her parents actually took her out of private school, and they got her a private tutor. Oh. Her name was Umeko Suda, who was a woman famous in her own right in the world of education. She taught Mickey English, and she was Mickey was a smart girl. She was a good student. And for some fucking reason, she just really liked to learn about religions. All right. Yep. I mean, you know, follow your passion. She was particularly fascinated with the world of Christianity. Oh. Ooh. I was going to say, maybe not that particular passion, although I don't know how corrupt the system was at this time. Well, maybe they still really Christianity meant to good. really wasn't a big religion in Japan. Ah. I don't care. Do what you want to do. So when she was 21, Mickey met and fell in love with a young Japanese diplomat named Renzo Sawada. Oh, a diplomat, you say. A diplomat. A diplomat, I say. A diplomat. He represented Japan as a diplomat and UN ambassador, and he was a Christian. Oh, yay. The parents were not super pleased with that, but she converted to Christianity and she married Renzo. Six okay. months after their marriage, the couple moved to Brazil and Argentina. I'm not really sure which came first, but they both got, they were, but Renzo had been assigned down there. So okay. they were off. All right. Argentina. So their first so- sh- son, Shinich, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry, but their first 
son, Shinich, was born into Buenos Aires. Uh, she got pregnant again in 1924, and Renzo got reassigned over to Beijing. So he went over there, and Mickey came back home to finish up the pregnancy basically near her family so she could have yeah. delivery with support around her. You want that. <laughs> You need that. She probably had the first kid in Buenos Aires and was like, fuck ever having yeah. a child away from my family again. Yeah, I'd rather that have... Speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> speak Portuguese. Yeah. Buenos Aires would have been Spanish, but... I don't speak yeah, Spanish. No. You don't know Buenos <laughs> I don't smoke Spanish. <laughs> I don't smoke Spanish. I do. <laughs> I know, but still... <laughs> Oh, to hear it <laughs> again, <laughs> having not remembered. <laughs> anyway, I thought you said Takiero for a second, but you didn't. <laughs> yeah. She got pregnant again in 1924. We just said that, so she had their second hun- son, Hisao, uh, in in Japan, and then she caught up with Renzo over in Beijing. All right, two sons now. Yep. All right. The next year, uh, she had their third son, Whoa! Akira. That's a lot of, I guess. That's a lot of burthen. That's a lot of sons too. A lot of pregnancy. A lot. A lot of sons. A lot of rambunctious. A lot of. Well, any kids rambunctious. That's so much poop. Do you understand how much poop? Yeah, three kids. Three kids, and they're all like under five. Under five. God. So much activity. So much parental activity needed. Yeah. What is this? Nineteen twenty. 1925 is the third one, and then she was. She's not even. So she got married in like 22, 1922, I think. When she was 20. Yeah, 21. She probably had first one in 20, 23, the second one in 24. Pretty normal for the time. Damn. Yeah, that's a lot of rapid pregnancy. <laughs> okay, you're going to love this. In 1926, Renzo got assigned to a post at the Foreign Affairs Ministry, so the Sawada family returned to Japan. Mickey had a fourth child, a girl named Amiko. Oh, there's a sister now. There's a little girl, yep. Yay! And I think that's actually, like, how how Mickey's, her, like, children, her, her siblings... Lined up that three way. Three boys and a girl. Like, she was the fourth... And she was and the, the first, first girl. girl. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah. In a good way, I guess. So in 1930, Renzo got his post updated this time to London. The family moved there and started to put down some shallow roots as only diplomatic families carted around the world truly know how to do. Like, Ugh. you get in and the first few days you're recovering and then the next few days you're putting art up on the wall because, yeah. You got to make it feel like home. Immediately. Before you have to pack up and go again. Yep. Yep. Mickey made friends and she got to know her community. Are you okay to read a quote, B? Yeah, sure. Is your <clears throat> voice feeling all right? Uh, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Okay. So this is a quote from the Thousand Cranes Foundation. While living in London, Mickey was very active in amateur drama as well as in church. At first, she attended a Methodist church, but to save money on gas, made the decision to go to the Anglican church that the family's governess had been taking the children to. God One Sunday care. after church, what? Gas is expensive. God doesn't care. Gas is expensive. Yeah, not, not at all. Get your ass to church. Mm-mm. One Sunday after church, for some reason, the rector introduced Mickey to a lady in the congregation. The lady invited her to go on a road trip to the countryside. Sounds like the start of a murder mystery. Oh, no. If you're a golf widow today, why not come with me? That's very funny. I'd like to show you a beautiful part of England. Her husband's off playing golf with his buddies on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, sure is. That's sad. Don't call her out. So, after about a three-hour ride, they arrived at a settlement consisting of a large building surrounded by many cottages. It was one of many orphanages that had been set up all over England by Dr. Thomas Bernardo in the previous century after a large number of children had been orphaned by cholera, many of them ending up in the street. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey toured the facility extensively and being impressed with the operation, offered to volunteer there once a week. 
She later wrote, contrasting this experience with her privileged life to the point, quote, until then I lived in a happiness given to me by others. But now I realize that I was far happier in giving something in giving something rather than in always receiving. Yeah, that's that's lovely. Yeah, that's I like that. I like her. And I think I know who she is. So obviously at this point she started volunteering. She volunteers at the home. She's starting to feel a lot more fulfilled than she had in a long time. Uh, She loved the work and she loved the children. But as is tradition for government families, Renzo got stationed elsewhere Mm. and was off to Paris for the Sawada crew. Oh, she was really happy. I know. So she continued volunteer work where she could and also continued her networking around the world. She made a lot of friends, a lot of places. She volunteered her time where she could. Um, It involved a lot of socializing and going to live shows. It was during one of these many shows that Mickey met Josephine. Uh, Josephine Baker was a fabulous, famous black entertainer uh, living in Paris because unlike the United States, France had the all, all the time in the world for black singer. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know she met Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. The two became fast friends and then they remained close. That's excellent. Because she was fluent in English and could hobnob with the best of them, she was very successful in making friends and connections around the globe. Hmm. But volunteering at that orphanage had changed her. She began to have a yearning for purpose. She wanted to do something that mattered. Um, And then the family eventually got to New York, where Renzo was appointed as a consul general. Hmm. What does that mean? It was another diplomatic position. He was... I don't know. Just another big He was a name. council for important people. I'm not really sure. General of the word army. Something like that. I mean, there's like embassies all over the country. True. So, I mean, he, yeah, it was something. <clears throat> well, I just meant words because he's a diplomat. Yeah. <laughs> so Mickey, who had her entire life been outspoken about her values and her beliefs, loved New York. I, like, I mean, she loved it. She had gotten into drama in London and she'd gotten into painting in France and in New York, she continued both of these things. She started, she continued attending live shows when she could in, in New York. It was like, these yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You got the Broadway. Yes. Broadway. 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 The Broadway. So I'm pretty sure we're in like 1936 and 37. Um, I'll make a public apology for this. English translations, again, for the websites. Questionable. Okay. Uh, and the English articles are super brief, so I'm really trying. <laughs> anyway, so Mickey's old friend, Josephine. Josephine Baker. Joseph, I don't know why I put such a twang on it. I don't either, but I love it. Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. She comes into town. Yeah, she comes in for the Zigfield Folly. She's shipping in from Paris, um, and she's going to be performing, so she's going to be living there for a little while. Oh, and Mickey is so excited to see her friend and, I'm and excited watch the for show her. and just, like, have her around for a while. So when Josephine docked, she was met by two people. Okay. She had come in with a ton of other, like, people that were coming in for shows. And for there entourage. was crowds of people that were greeted every time, ta- you know, everyone else on the ship as, you know, as they got off. Tons of people met them. She's got two. So she's got her agent who was super brief and really haughty and like left yeah. as soon as he, as they basically like confirmed, okay, you landed. Good. And then Mickey, who was like, all right, I guess I'm your welcoming party. Oh, okay. That was weird. Yeah. So they went around New York then and basically kind of started the monumental task of finding a hotel room for a black entertainer. Hmm. No one would take the black woman. Nobody wanted to be seen with a quote unquote Negro in their building. Uh, Mickey got fed up and even asked the custodian of the building their apartment had been located in like, you know, the diplomatic suite, whatever. Right. So the guy said, technically the apartment was the property of Japan. So he couldn't say anything, but if anyone found out that a black woman was living in the, in the building, people would start moving out. Yeah. So it was really just fucking awful. Like, well, yeah, this was Jim Crow laws. Yes, this was in New York, so they really didn't have a lot of Jim Crow laws, but there was still just a lot of. I mean, it would have been like during like the forties. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. So yeah, they weren't under was... Jim Crow. Oh yeah, duh, Jim Crow South. But it was still like, I mean, they could be, they could still be as racist as they wanted to be. No, yeah, it wasn't that the North was nice. Right. I mean, I mean, the civil it rights put it movement into wouldn't even start for another 20, 30 years almost. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So racism. for fucking Josephine Baker. Yeah. It's still like she's still well renowned in the U.S. at this time for. No, she, no. I mean, she was like, she was. I'm going to do a story on her, which is the only reason you're not going to hear any more okay. about that story. Okay. Other than Mickey finally convinced the landlord of her art studio to like let, uh, to let Josephine stay there on, like on the slide. Still so, such a disappointment to hear. Yeah. It was really disappointing, but I am going to tell a whole, okay. We're going to do a whole Josephine Baker episode. So I'm not going to go into details because yeah. there are very funny stories here. And, and I'm making it. This is about Mickey. So I got to make this about Miki. Yes. Okay. So Miki. World War II breaks out for America and it was instigated by Japan. So you were both alive for 9-11. What happened to every brown person after those t- fucking towers fell? Uh, Is it a racist I, I right there. Yeah, right. Exactly what B says. It was immediate racism of us versus them. Yeah. yeah. That's about what happened with Jap- Japanese people. So yeah. she didn't feel comfortable in New York anymore. So she went back to Japan from time to time. Yeah. Um, and when the war finally broke out, she just decides she's going to stay in the country. Yeah. Um, I think the ca- kids came with her, but if not, they were like old enough to be in school at that point. So it, they may have stayed in the U S depending on what type of school they went to. I'm, I don't know. Okay. She went back and she went to Oiso Kanagawa, which is in a place on the outskirts of Tokyo. So okay. Tokyo is like in the middle of the island. Nagasaki and Hiroshima are down here. Okay. South. Yes. I know that that's the, that's the point of like, uh, reference you have. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They're down here. <laughs> we're, uh, we're sitting up here. I will tell you guys, I barely passed geography in high school. So I need this. That's just how this goes. So diplomats in Japan at that point were seen with suspicion specifically because they had foreign friends and she had a lot of foreign friends. Um, And maybe those friends knew information that could hurt the country Mm. or the diplomats could have information harmful to Japan just in general. It was just a bad time. Okay. Um, She was followed a lot. It made her really uncomfortable. She'd be questioned and accused by these police. And, Mickey was always really firm in her refusal to take shit. So like, it just mm-hmm. never, it never actually came to anything, but they would actually stop and like question her. And she'd just like, Fuck no, yeah. no, let me go. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just going to the grocery store. Yes. Damn. All right. So for um, time purposes, we're going to make this part of it very short. Okay. World war two happened. It was fucked. Everybody go see Oppenheimer. The bombs got dropped. They just killed hundreds of thousands of people in the most horrific way possible. And then left everlasting effects on the generations that are around there afterwards. And not only that, they left all of these people to do all of that and recover themselves. But then... Yeah, no responsibility. Americans, not only... They couldn't just leave them alone after that. They came in and then they lived there. And they occupied occupied Japan for years and years afterwards. Oh, Fuck we you. are skipping to occupation. I just so hate- all of this shit happened. It was really bad. Yeah. Occupation. What happens in occupation? Well, rich families now are are presented with a ninety percent wealth tax. By but who does that? Who gets that tax? What do you mean? Who gets? It's where does taxed. the tax? But to the government of Japan. The government of Japan was the one who got us into the war in the first place. Why would we want to give tax to the government of Japan? Okay, I'm just, maybe I missed something. Hold on. You were saying that the yeah. wealthy Japanese in which uh-huh. country? In Japan. In Japan. Yep. Are being taxed by who? So essentially what's happening is the, their government is taxing them to pay back the United States. Okay, that's the part I was missing. Yeah. That's why I was asking. No, it's definitely there. going to the United States. Okay, that's what I'm I was trying to get. You. God damn. <laughs> don't make me do it. She doesn't understand what I'm fucking with her. I don't. I don't understand. I had, I, I swear to God, in, in college, I had alcohol poisoning, and the doctor said there might be brain damage, and I swear it was my sarcasm unit. It's the only deficiency I've had since then. <laughs> don't do this 
this be? Don't don't <laughs> put your hands on your forehead. I whenever you do a don't, it doesn't. It's not a don't. It's don't you like don't do this. <laughs> you I don't know why I do that. Turn Chicago. Don't do this. <laughs> I've lived many places. I have many secret don't, accent words. Don't don't do it as bad. The bears. God. The balls and the bears. The bears. The bears. Anyway. The bears, the bears, the bears. Okay, so back on track. <laughs> I understand what's happening now because you're not fucking with me anymore. <laughs> I'm still not convinced. <laughs> so, anyway, to pay so back the U.S. The she company that had provided so much wealth to her family, not necessarily her, her husband was a diplomat, they were doing fine. But basically, this family wealth. <laughs> just died. I mean, yeah, it's like gone. got taken away. Um, the businesses, because the, even though the Mitsubishi Corporation like didn't agree with what was going on, like how Japan made their decisions, they had nothing to do with that. They had done business during the war. And so basically they were made to stop. Like they couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So like as a cor- corporation, you just can't be anymore. So luckily the corporation had already known enough to like diversify and spread mm-hmm. out their corporations so they have stuff in the US already I think the UK oh. um, stuff like that so that didn't have to shut down yeah. but Japan did and all of the lower companies they were still able to operate because they were their own thing mm-hmm. just the umbrella over here yeah yeah got taken down I see right but it wiped out a lot of the family fortune. Basically, their whole family was broken now. That makes... Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, everyone's on rations for a long time. Uh, just, it, it... Everything is horrific. Mickey was really lucky that she was far away from the blast sites, both loca- that were both located in southwestern Japan. Anyway, when you have money, you don't have to worry about money. But now they didn't have money, so now they had to worry about money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Welcome to the life. So outside of that family, around the nation of Japan, along with the occupation, came copulation. You're staring at me. Don't do that with eye contact. Fucking. Okay. Yeah, the soldiers and the women in the area were fucking. So We're integrating. They're integrating. Yeah, you said incubating. <laughs> no, they said integrating. What did you? I thought he said incubating. They'll be incubating later. <clears throat> Basically, when the American soldiers landed, a lot of their job was to just stand around and like keep the peace while people around them were just fucking terrified of yeah. being bombed to all fuck again. So yeah. they were already scared. It was just, it wasn't great. A dramatic yeah. invasion. Yes, and so these American soldiers were bored, and the Japanese people were scared of them. Um, um, we obviously will never know the extent of voluntary versus involuntary uh, fucking, but a lot of fucking happened. Yeah, I'm agree. I'm going to just go ahead and say many of it was not voluntary. Right. On the Japanese. Don't think about it. It makes sense if you don't think about it, so don't think about it. No, I'm going to just don't think about acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Yeah. Uh, so the American soldiers got to fuck with the Japanese women in the area that produced a whole slew of interracial babies. Mm-hmm. Remember that weirdo over from Germany who kind of thought that, like, if you mix races, that it was kind of a bad thing and then, like, decided to just fucking kill a bunch of people for it? Yeah. Yeah, but he, he lost the war and then ran away to Argentina. And then killed himself. Wait, now. Hmm. Which, which German guy? That's, you uh, okay. that's, uh, all right. All right. That's, That's the a conversation for a different day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About how he didn't actually commit suicide and ended up in Argentina. Don't be a sheep. Yeah. Yeah. All of those mixed races things over in Germany that kind of still yeah. applied over here in it did. Japan. And these people pretty much <laughs> felt the same way. They were, and especially these babies specifically, they were proof of immoral union, a lot of non sexual <sighs> sex. And it was basically just shameful evidence of the mixing in general. Oh, yeah, because it's the kid's fault. Yes, absolutely it is. Do you not Appar- did you not think that? No, apparently I... Uh, it's always the baby's fault. No, I, I was... They ask to be born. No, they didn't they, Yeah, no, they they come to God and they say, they say, God, 
they say, God, I really, I really want to get to earth. So can you put me in this person right here? And then God asks why. And it doesn't matter. It did, God, it doesn't have to matter. Like God can be like, eh, cool. Yeah, sure. Or I'll give it another few years. This one's no good. I'll, I'll put you in the other one. Yeah. Here, take this little like loner. Take this loner life. Okay. Side tangent. The, I, this is really fucking dark. Yeah, that's fine. Tangent. That's that's what we're here for. This so when I was history. when I was growing up, obviously Mormon, we had there was this cheesy as fuck movie called Saturday's Warriors. Okay. And Saturday's Warriors was about the goings on of a family that was like really big. And the oldest kid was in his teenage years, and the youngest was just a little toddler. Mm-hmm. But the parents really wanted to have another kid. Well, up in heaven, they were all friends, and they all loved each other, blah, 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 blah. Well, now that they're down on Earth, they're, I don't know, the parents, like, decide, they're like, okay, we're going to have another baby. So they're telling the per- the story from the perspective of, like, the little girl that is up in heaven oh, that is, like, waiting to come down and be with her family and then she, the mom has a miscarriage and then literally like she had the little girl, they go, they show back to like heaven and the little girl is like walking away from like the, it was, it was like a beam me up Scotty pad. Type oh, deal. But like oh, they're walking away, they're having to walk away from it. And she's like, why can't I go? And it's like, it's just not the right time. And it was because this girl, this lady had a miscarriage because she's trying to give birth after having like. Seven other fucking kids. Anyway, it's a whole thing. It was a fucked up movie, but damn, yeah. that's a heavy topic. Yeah, and they uh, to children. Pass on that movie. Yeah, to children. To children. I'm just now realizing how fucked up that idea is. But yes, I wonder what their goal was with this. What, have you guys ever seen the? Brave like, can we get people into never having a miscarriage? But that's not something you're they robbing can someone <laughs> of having the ability to get born if you have a miscarriage. Obviously. But like it's what the fuck are you doing, me? <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. Have you guys, have you guys seen the Brave Little Toaster? Yes, that torture. That's a fucked up. That's a fucked yeah. up kids. Movie. That's a fucked up movie. I was terrified of the vacuum for a while. Did you ever see talk one? about Kamikaze? Yeah. All right, that's enough. Did you ever see Watership Down? I have not. Yeah. That's a fucked up movie. What's it about? Bunnies. Oh, okay. The title does not make me think it's about bunnies. Yeah, they all drown. That part makes me think the water. Okay, water ship makes sense, and then down. horrifying. Oh, uh, uh, and is that for kids? Yeah. Why? It's a cartoon. Why is that for kids? Why was the black cauldron for kids? Why was what hey, was the black cauldron? Is great, you shut your mouth. <laughs> See, uh, I thought Gurgi wants munchies and crunchies. There it is. There it is. No idea. Let's get back to Mickey. <laughs> yeah, Mickey. All right, so Mickey. This horrible shit is happening to all of these babies, and they're straight up murdering their children. Oh my god! Um, babies are getting dropped off like in ditches. They're getting, you know, they're popping up all around the nation. Just however you can get rid of them. That's because horrendous. You don't want to have a mixed race baby. Um, uh, so Mickey was seeing like so much death and destruction. Obviously she hated this, uh, for, especially for babies who in fact couldn't actually help that they had been born. No. Yeah. That's, that's, yes. That you was were correct on yeah, that. Yeah. I was I'm glad with you. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that already, but I just was going with it. None of the babies deserved the ends that they met. And having lived all around the world, she had this <laughs> truly global. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> No, none of the babies deserve not even one. No. I feel like I feel like it goes without saying that none of them deserve the yes. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> these were innocents. These were innocent lives lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in case you were questioning that, it. I needed to remind Oh you. my god. <laughs> Just to be very clear. As opposed to the shit babies that apparently um, Beverly Allett killed that were also innocent of anything that they did. Yeah, no. Oh lord. <laughs> Anyways. Continue. Yeah. Continue. So just to drive that whole fucking point home, something else happened. So one day Mickey's riding the train. 
and this package like falls into her lap. And so she's like, Oh, okay. So she tries to put it back up and right as she's trying to put it back up, the, you know, police come by and they're like, well, what's in the thing? She's like, I don't know. It's not mine. They're like, well, what's it? What is it? I don't know. So they open it up and it's a dead baby. It's a little black baby body, like corpse. That's not going to go over well. Yeah, fucking horrifying. And they're like, well, you're a Japanese woman, so this is a black baby. Obviously, you just had this baby and you're trying to dispose of it. And she's like, it's not mine. And so they uh, arrest her. They accuse her of, of, of obviously trying to dispose of this body. Yeah. Um, they take her off the train at the next station. They take her right down to the police station. They're questioning her. And basically, they're like, you need to strip down and, like, show us that you haven't had a baby recently. And she gets, like, halfway through this thing. And she goes, you know what? Have a doctor do this. Yeah. Like, examine me. If you really think that, like, that three-day-old baby came out of me, examine me. And so they do. And sure enough, she has not had a baby in years. And so she's allowed to go, and they're like, we're, you know, kind of sorry. But it really... We're kind of sorry. <laughs> are police ever really sorry? No, <laughs> they are not. That's why I said they're kind of sorry. Mm. So she gets out of this fucking traumatized, but also realizing these babies, like, need a place to go. Yeah. So she decides to do something about it. So she starts writing letters. She starts writing letters to her friends all around the world. She's got all of these diplomat friends. She's got all of these, like, church friends from Mm -hmm. this church and that church because she wasn't picky. God didn't care, apparently. So she's asking for money. She's like, I'm poor, and I want to run a home here in Japan for these mixed-race babies that are just being being abandoned. Yeah. Um. Their family home, they had had, like, this villa that had been in the home for, you know, in the family for hundreds of years. And as part of the, like, attempt to pay this huge wealth tax that they owed, uh, they had to give up the villa. Yeah. They had to give the home back to the government, which was really upsetting. Um, but because she had connections with, like, certain U.S. diplomats, <laughs> she was able to basically kind of finagle her way into getting them to approve using that villa for this orphanage. Okay. But they wouldn't fund it and neither would the Japanese government. Uh. So she started writing letters and so, and, and money started pouring in. So she was able to open this thing up and Japanese government decided definitely that they didn't want to support it. They were like, you cannot do this as part of a government program. So from fucking day one, she was, Already behind. I don't know. For anyone who's ever run a truly good program that's like nonprofit where all of your money has been spent before it even comes in. Yeah. Um, it's expensive to raise kids. You gotta buy clothes. You gotta have yeah, so much food. Yeah. Um, you, you know, beds, blankets. She had to build more buildings on the, you know, on the property to be able to house all of these children. She had to be able to mm-hmm. hire care and help that, you know, for people that could actually like come in and help her take care of these children. Uh, so it was a lot of money. So she was behind already and that the home opened up in 1948 and she went to, she went to the U S in 1949 and 1950 and toured around the U S to raise money. Oh my gosh. That should, how long did that take to get it up and running? It was like two, it was like a year or two years, I think. Damn. She worked hard. Yeah. I can't imagine trying to get that program going up in like a year or two with no money. In my notes for the, for the train scene. I'm sorry. This is so dumb. In my notes for the train scene, uh, right as the, the baby is discovered, it says, that looked a tiny bit suspicious. And yeah. In parentheses, I have, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. suspicious. Don't Ralph, you, is that you? <laughs> what I just show. like to say that I have never done Money, anything please. in my life. I know this, and I love you. Money, please. Money, please. You just need to give her some money, or she won't. She'll start breaking things. That's funny. Yeah, so she wrote thousands of letters. She pulled every metaphorical card she'd ever earned with any person she still had the contact information for. She contacted American diplomats who were really connected. They helped her work out the permissions to use the villa and get the alterations for the, um, 
get the permits for the additional buildings. Um, her old pal Josephine even contributed to the founding. Yay, Josephine. Josephine Baker. Josephine. Uh, she went so far as to pretty much sell every other asset that she had, but the money ended up adding up and they were able to build this orphanage. Woo! It opened in 1948 and it was specifically meant for mixed race children born in that area. All right. Wow. They had a, they had a goal and a mission. Yes. Named for the very first donor to the project, the orphanage was named the Elizabeth Saunders Home. Ah! Oddly enough, Japan didn't really love this project of hers. They didn't support the home, and they weren't going to provide funds for it. So the day <laughs> the doors opened, they were already in the red. And Yeah, um, yeah that's a nonprofit. Yep, to do the- money went out faster than it came in. Trying to do good work and not trying to get paid. Yep. So the next year, she went to the U.S. She uh, had enough connections at various schools. She was invited to give lectures here and there. But then she also had fundraising events while she was in these certain cities for the Elizabeth Saunders home to continue that flow of cash. You know, yeah, you got to strike wherever you can. Yeah, it was a lot of grueling work, and it was take. It took like all day, every day, and especially, and even after it opened, she never stopped her letter writing campaigns. Damn right. Yeah. Good for you. Thousands of children went through this home, but an orphanage is supposed to be just a temporary space for children until they find their forever homes. Mm-hmm. Japanese families weren't too keen on adding to their families from the mixed race lot, but luckily not everyone was so racist. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of Mickey's friends and many of the donors to the school adopted children from the home and provided Lovely. safe and loving places for them. Josephine Baker even adopted from the home and <laughs> performed a concert that benefited them. Oh, see, I love it. We're back to the friendship. I love the friendship yep. they struck it's up. It's about coming together. Women supporting mm-hmm. women. So once the home and had, children. Exactly, yeah. So once the home had been fairly established and the funding, at least for a few more years, secured, it was time for some of the kids to learn because they, you know, not all of them got so lucky as to get out super soon, you know, that quickly. So Mickey decided to create St. Stephen's School, which was a school based to teach the children that lived in the home. Hey! So for the next 17 to 25-ish years, she worked in that home and traveled to fundraise for the school. Um, She adopted children herself. Her children had been long grown. Yeah. You know, they were long grown up. They were doing their own thing. I think her youngest was like in their late teens. Yeah. Her husband, she had been separated from for a really long time. I think they'd just grown distant. It was like, you know what? You do your own thing. This is her life. This is what she's dedicating her time. Yeah. So she spends, she spends all of her time doing this. Uh, she, she fundraises, she adopts her own children and they, they come and live with her at her own home. Wow. Um, she earns her title by virtue of the relative number of children who had gone through the home. The mother of 2000 children. Wow. In 1972, Mickey 2000. was awarded two. uh, what'd you say? I was just like, wow, 2000. Yeah, 2000. And I think there's, I mean, n- I think there's more, there's True. been more, obviously, since then. Yeah, that was Because it is still a functional of... home. Oh, today? Yeah. Whoa, what yeah. a legacy. Yeah, it's still there. In 1972, Mickey was awarded Order of the Sacred Treasure, second class. This is a Japanese honor of one of the highest orders for exemplary work in social wear- welfare. Hmm. There are not too many details about the end of the life of Mickey, like, basically, it's like, this is the thing that she did, and then she worked here, and then she died. Uh, so mm-hmm. she worked at the home, as I would assume, like, as long as, as, she, her, was able. as she was physically able. That's my guess. Um, and then she went over to and moved to Mallorca, which is an <gasps> island in Spain. Ooh, my parents went on a trip to Mallorca. They said it was beautiful. I literally typed in. It was probably a place she visited while living in Europe and just decided she fell in love. That's where she wanted to be. Good for you. Um. I want to retire in Mallorca. <laughs> right? So do I. I know. So in May 1980, Miki Sawada had a heart attack and died. She was 78, and her orphans have been adopted around the world, and her own, the home is still active to this day. Excuse me, I had a yawn come on. I just had to not sleep well. That's <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> oh, so, okay, I have to say, if go, I'm going to go back up to the Elizabeth Saunders part, because... Yeah. 
I remember I, I, I sent this uh, name to you. You did? I did. And it was because I was, at the time, I still had an active Ancestry membership. For, like I've been trying to go through my family tree, and we're trying to figure out where in Sweden we're from, where in Lebanon we're from, where in Norway, etc. And while I was going through the Sanders part of the family tree, Elizabeth Sa- Sanders she had a number of different hints that would pop up Mm -hmm. and the way ancestry does it is other people who've been searching this person. If you know, you find articles and stuff, you can post them up Mm -hmm. and then they'll be linked to this person and people can kind of go through all the evidence you're posting. Yeah. Somebody posted a story about Elizabeth Saunders and there's an Elizabeth Sanders in my family and Saunders and Sanders tend to pop up a lot. Yes. As the same person. So I'm not sure if the Elizabeth Saunders, who was the first donator, was somebody I was related to, but she was was from Illinois, and that side of the family was in Illinois. So I, don't, I was trying to figure this out, but when, as soon as I read the article, I started going into it, and then I found out about Miki so, so, uh, Sawa. Sawada. Sawada. Miki Sawada. And then I read about Miki Sawada, and I was like, yes, yeah. this is a dangerous, amazing rebellious lady and i was like lauren (laughs) yeah it's a shorter episode but i thought it was interesting and the the fact that like her whole family you know she pretty much i mean her whole family like they lost their family fortune and were definitely not able to bring it back I mean, well, over time, I think, so... The, Not in their of, life, The though. postscript for that, I guess, is, like, Mitsubishi was able to refound again in, like, 1970s or something and bring a lot of those companies back. So yeah. now it's functional and does the thing. Um, it has mm. different companies that it'll shut down and pick up every once in a while. Right, right. I don't know how long it's been since they've made cars, but they still make all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And they're, they still have, like, one of the biggest shipping companies in the world. I never, I still did not realize that Mitsubishi, to this day, I just know it as a car company. Yeah, I have, like, a ton of research up here where yeah. I'm like, just taking, like, oh. literally just trying to take notes and stuff because I, it was a lot of information. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Um, yeah, I just was, like, I was incredibly confused. I was like, whoa, Mitsubishi... She was an heir. Essentially, yeah. she was going to be an heiress. Yeah. And so she, yeah, she, she began an heiress. She had these great intentions. And then like, if I had had a huge family fortune mm. that I had had access to my whole life. And then all of a sudden, like in my, fuck, what is this mid forties at this point? Yeah. All of a sudden, like it's gone. It's just gone. And I'm just, my family's just poor and like, my childhood villa that I, you know, have my mm. best memories of or whatever. It's like, been family this, for hundreds of years. that's gone, you know, like that would have just devastated me. But instead she kind of took Found this happiness and was like, through I'm going to get it back. Which she, is crazy because that's exactly what her, like, that's exactly what her grandfather did when he decided he wanted to get the samurai status. Yeah. He was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So she didn't let poverty stop her and she you know could, took what could have been a really bad thing and turned it into yeah. something that helped a lot of pit a lot of a lot of people a lot of kids like countless kids so many kids um 2000 plus yeah wow miki you are amazing wherever you are she died i know she's that dead i know she's dead i know she's on the I'm aware <laughs> i am aware <laughs> Oh, sorry, not the 1970s. It's 1954. The ones to fight in Mitsubishi Corporation conducted a series of mergers leading to an overall merger into a single entity. So back in the 50s. Mm. 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 But I think her family's wealth was gone at that point. Yeah, this is probably like just reconstructing it. Is this, I guess it's not still in the family, I assume. I don't know. No idea. Maybe. I have no idea. That requires more research. Maybe an update. Oh. Anyway, that's well, thank key. you for doing it. Episode. Well, thank you all for listening with us. You can find out more about us at our website, wellbehavedwomenpodcast.com. You can email us at wellbehavedwomenpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on TikTok now. We are on TikTok now. If you want to listen to little snippets or uh, see some upcoming behind the scenes stuff, we may be putting that there. That is at wellbehavedwomenpod. Um, and then t- I'm threads. On, yeah, we're on threads. Well, we have women podcast. We've got a few followers there. Dorky Yay! Pod, uh, which is great. They're 
They've got a great show. Talk to us. I want to hear, like, if you guys have um, artists that you want to share, of people that, of artists that, like, emotionally wrecked you in ways that you weren't expecting, um, let us know, because that hit me like a ton of bricks when I, uh, and for the first time, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let us know. TikTok what? us. Thread us. Uh, we have Facebook. Insta, Reddit. Facebooks. Just let us know. Yeah, you can find us on Reddit and Facebook under Well Behaved Women Podcast. Um, and then I think that's all of them. Most that's of it. them. That's most of them. Obviously, you can find us wherever you get your podcast. Please leave a review if you have time. You can rate us. Um, pretty much either Apple, Spotify has a rate function as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. We so appreciate you and we will see you in another video or Bye. video, another podcast episode. You know what I'm talking about. I speak mostly English. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.